So uh, we all know that uh, Venetoclax uh, uh, was a breakthrough uh, in AML, especially in the unfit uh, patients, where we see response rates um, coming uh, coming up to uh, usually 70, uh, 70 75 percent. Uh, we see that uh, Venetoclax-based regimens actually work uh, throughout all of the genetic subgroups, uh, um, not not depending on 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 karyotypes or specific mutations. Uh, however, we do see that some genetic uh, genetic subgroups, such as NPM1 or, or IDH mutated patients, are um, have the venetoclax sensitive genotype and are the most likely to achieve a response. And in some cases, uh, the venetoclax based regimens are actually curated for them, and we can discuss about the discontinuation of the therapy. Nevertheless, uh, the majority of patients will still eventually relapse. And if there's such a possibility, uh, it's very important to, to consider uh, whether that patient is a candidate for an allo transplantation. Uh, we also have emerging data about the venetoclax in the fit patients when venetoclax is combined with, with uh, standard intensive chemotherapy, and especially with uh, venetoclax plus flagida or, or clear regimens where we see impressive response rates and impressive uh, remission durations. Um, uh, on the other hand, uh, Toxicity is also important here. Uh, myelosuppression uh, is the main uh, is the main adverse event for for venetoclax-based therapies, uh, whether it's uh, uh, with an intensive backbone or with a low uh, intensity backbone, such as uh, HMA or or low dose itarabine. So addressing that, uh, we are still I think we're still learning to use venetoclax properly, and what we do see the tendencies that. Uh, Earlier bone marrow evaluation during cycle one, for example, on day 21 or day 14, uh, can actually uh, give us information about the patient's response and uh, discontinuation of venetoclax in those responders, giving them GCSF, administering prophylaxis uh, with antibiotics, with antifungals, and of course, um, uh, not to uh, hurry up with the second cycle and just wait for hematological recovery after cycle one. Uh, we also see that uh, some patients during their maintenance phase with venetoclax and, and HMAs are actually uh, prone to have cytopenias and um, we also address this by uh, reducing the number of days of venetoclax to 14 or, or even to seven days. Uh, and of course, uh, uh, prolonging uh, the interval uh, between the cycles. For example, giving those cycles every five, six weeks. Uh, regarding the tumor lysis syndrome, we also know that is important in the beginning of therapy. So what, what we see that uh, basically, uh, patients with high disease burden, and especially those who have venetoclax sensitive genotype, those with NPM1 or IDH mutations, they are in a higher risk for tumor lysis syndrome and should be uh, monitored uh, more closely than, than other patients.